um, what to pray for, especially at this hour now that we are praying um, in this 21 day fasting. Fasting is good for us. Amen. Uh, it's hard in the flesh, but it is good in the spirit. And Jesus said, flesh and blood must not, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom. But he also said this, he also said that um, men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So you see that when it comes to fasting, don't expect everyone to be part of it or everyone to commit to become, because it is something that only people that have got a personal relationship with God are able to put themselves into. Amen. Many people that don't really have a relationship with God will not be able to do it because it asks your heart to commit. You can do that if you are not committed. It, it, these are the things, it's, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, many people, I, real, I realize that it, on this journey, that's what the Bible says, many are called, but few are chosen. So the few that are chosen are the ones that are able to pick up their cross and follow Jesus. Many people only wanted Jesus on the mountain, but not on, in the law. You get it? So, so, so many people will n don't expect because it says like that. Many are called, but few are chosen. And the other that are chosen will have the heart to go and sacrifice at the altar. As you know, sacrifice is not easy. But you know, when the Bible talks about in Romans 12, when it says that, we must present our body as a living sacrifice. That also includes fasting. Amen? And Jesus said, when you fast, he did not say, if you fast, if you happen to fast. He said, when you fast. And he said that they will learn to fast when the bridegroom has been taken away. And we know that Jesus Christ has been taken away. The bridegroom is in heaven. And there he said, they will learn to fast. He was talking about his followers will learn to fast. Hallelujah. So it may be hard in the physical, which is good. It's a sacrifice. Oftentimes sacrifice, it is something that needs to ask something from you to attain something greater. The spiritual reward we get in fasting, they are mind blowing. You increase in your relationship with God, knowledge and wisdom and understanding in you get close to God, you get the revelation, things that you cannot buy from the shop. Hallelujah. And things that no one will teach you. You see, I shared a lot of revelation here, but it's not oftentimes that everything you catch, because most of them are, 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 are spiritually discerned and they are received through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's why a sermon can go on full of the power of the Holy Spirit, but only few people will catch it. Those whose heart were prepared to receive, they will catch it. Amen. Amen. So things of the Spirit are not just received by... You see, that's why people that have got a relationship with God can understand the Bible. People that don't have a relationship with God cannot understand the Bible. The same word are spoken to the whole, to the majority of people, but only those that are, are, know God will be able to understand what has been spoken here. Because the things of God are spiritually discerned and are spiritually received. It is by the Spirit we receive the Word of God. Hallelujah. So, and you know, on the, on the poster here, I put a, a scripture. I just want to read it. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garment. So it's always good when we, at, at the beginning of our fasting, we concentrate on our personal life by through cleansing, by uh, uh, repenting, and everything that you know that is not godly to take it out of your life. You are making a door for the Holy God to enter in, the King of glory to walk into your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. So there is preparation into fasting. We don't just jump into it like that. You have to prepare. The first day, normally, with all most of my fasting, the first day, I'll concentrate on myself by repenting, cleansing, being quiet before God so that He can reveal certain things that are in me that, that I may mean, miss. But in heaven, they see it as a clutch in my eyes. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. So that is Exodus 19, verse 10. And the, the scripture that is, that, you know, the Bible calls us in the book of Revelation, I guess Revelation 1. Revelation 1 verse 5 I'll write just immediately from verse 4 there John to the seven churches which are in Asia grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirit who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, hallelujah, the firstborn from the dead and the, the ruler over all kings of the earth. Did you get that? He's the ruler over the kings of the earth. Kings, the ones you can see and the ones you cannot see. Amen? And then it says, To him who loved us and washed us from our sins with his own blood. That's so big and powerful. To him who loved us. First of all, he loved us and he washed us from our sins with his own blood. And and, had, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 So he has made us what? Kings and priests. That's not a lie. That is the truth. Amen. That is not a lie. That's what the Holy Word of God is showing us. He had made us priests and kings to his God. You know, this position of a priest was in people. It was not something you choose to be yourself. You are elected to be a priest. Aaron was elected by God. Not by the children of Israel. And it's not a position you get by the community or by the church. Hallelujah. This is a position that God himself ordained you to be. Praise God. And here, Jesus, the word of God is telling us here, very clear and very clear. I mean, it can never get clearer than that, that he has made us, we, that are his children today. He has made us kings and priests. We have been elected by God to be priests. In the old covenant, this was only given to one or few, three people, to the sons of Aaron. They were given that privilege to be priests unto God. There were the people that stood for the people. They were like mediator, so to say, between men and God. They were the one that intercede for the children of Israel. They were the one that given the privilege to judge. Mind you, you have to know that even kings did not have that privilege. What the priest has, the priest could judge. So when the matter in the community or in the whole camp of Israel, something happened, the priest could give his own mind and say, According to the word of God, or I, I was reading where they would determine the judgment over a person or sentence a person by their wrong. And God says, whatever the priest has determined or has judged you, that you should do. That's power. So he gave them the authority to judge. Hallelujah. And they were serving the holy temple. They touch holy things. They experienced, they could walk into the presence of God. The other people couldn't. Amen? 
They could walk into the presence of God. They could touch the holy things of God. They were the one that gives sacrifice and offering. The children of Israel will bring their things here. They are, you know, they are sacrificed, but they only outside the, 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 the tabernacle. These are the people that take things inside before the presence of God. And this is what it says in the New Testament that we have become just that. I mean, we can walk into the presence of God just like that. And here the word of the Lord is telling us that to him who loved us and washed us from our sins with his blood. Hey, Amen. Amen. We are washed so we can enter. Amen. Praise God. We are washed so we can enter. This is not a natural washing. It's a spiritual work of the Holy Spirit that regenerates us and makes us one with God. And when we have been made one with God, we are given even a high position in the Spirit. We are priests. We can judge. That's true. We can. We can judge. That's why we can speak and so shall it be. That's authority that we've been given because we've been elevated to a priesthood. Hallelujah. Please, it's just as simple as I'm saying it. You can speak, you can declare, and it shall come to pass. It doesn't say here apostles, prophets. It speaks of a believer that every believer has been elevated to a priesthood place in the spirit. Hallelujah. And therefore, being a priest, uh, with these guys, they just didn't become a priest like, like that. Like, okay, now, there was some ritual that were done for them to qualify. God elected them, but there was some ritual they did. Right? Okay, Exodus 30, verse 30, it says. Hey, hallelujah. I'll read 29 there. It says, you shall consecrate them that they may be most holy. This is talking about Aaron. Since these were the people that God chose to be priesthood, to be priest. He said, you shall consecrate them that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them must be holy. Then verse 30 say, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister to me as priest. Amen. You shall anoint Aaron. So they were what was really the distinction between the Levites, the priest, and just the normal Levites or just the normal Israelites? It was the anointing. Amen. God consecrate them by reason of anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Anointing to do what? To serve. In what? In his holy camp. They were given new garments. They were washed. If you read, if you can read that, you see that they were washed, given new garments, and they were anointed. Showing a, 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 a picture of repentance. Amen. Repentance is what sanctifies us. Because we allow the blood to cleanse us and we repent of our filthiness and then we get the anointing. Amen? That's why the anointing is a power. That's why the Bible says that as many as receive him, to them he gave power. He anoints them. So they can function as children of God. Even the priests, they needed to be consecrated so they can function as children of God. Mm 
Amen. Amen. So the anointing is not just healing. No. See, a child of God, you are anointed. The Bible says in 1 John, you have received an anointing. Hallelujah. Otherwise, you can't function as a child of God. Just that inner, inner understanding that you have that is different, that you have an enlightenment. That enlightenment is the anointing. Anointing to serve where God has called you to serve. Anointing to do his work. Anointing to be filled with such distinct wisdom. The Bible says that Daniel was distinguished. He didn't perform miracles. He was distinguished among them all. What was that? The anointing. Hallelujah. They will come for Solomon had wisdom more than anyone else. It's the anointing. It's what makes the difference. The Bible says by reason of the anointing. Hallelujah. So he was distinguished, Solomon, by wisdom. That is the anointing of the Lord working there. The, what is the anointing? Is the enablement. You get it? It's pure the enablement. We, for instance, me, I, I, I would say that maybe I'm a teacher of the word, but I have recognized that the Lord has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. Now, that enablement that makes it, because sometimes I don't use faith to do that. I also don't know if the person is healed, but the person will come back healed because of the enablement that I cannot see. You get it? So beyond my words, there is something more than, there is something that people cannot see that enable things to happen. You get it? That is the anointing. It's like someone, as in the, in the case of Daniel, where it says, he was distinguished. The way he thought, the way he do things, the way he, 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 he the Bible says he was of an excellent spirit. And you know that the Bible says one of the seven spirits of God is a spirit of excellence. You get it? In the book of Isaiah, it says the spirit of excellence, which means that just for that, for him to be distinguished, to be different, it was by the reason of the anointing. So it's that enabling power that we are talking about, to function as a priest. And they needed to be consecrated to me, Aaron and his son, so they can serve me. What is consecration? Let me tell you. Consecration, it means separation. Separate unto me. All right? And... Uh, The Bible says, in the book of John 17, verse 17, it says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. You, that word sanctify, it's consecrate. Separate them with your truth, by your truth. So the word of God separates us. The word of God consecrate us. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, there is a scripture coming to my mind right now. It's Acts 13 verse 2. The Bible says, verse 2, they says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Do you see that? Act 13, verse 2. Verse two. Are we there? As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Hallelujah. 
Mm. So when they were ministering to God, what does it mean to minister to God? They were praying, they were worshiping. They were not, they were just glorifying the name of the Lord. They were adoring him, ministering unto God. The Holy Spirit spoke. So as you minister to God, the Holy Spirit goes and talk. He's going to speak to you. Just know that it's all, you know, I, I always want you to take the things of God simple because they are not difficult. They are very simple. God speaks to you every day. The reason you don't pick him up is you don't pick it because you're not familiar to his voice. How do you get more familiar? The word of God makes the voice of God to be because this word is one with his word. So when he's whispering to you, you can sense the word of God in itself. There is a spirit of God. So when I'm reading, it's like, you know, my spirit, like, let's say maybe Mehilini or maybe Tete or maybe Tolina. These people, they've been with me for a long time. So I'm sure they know my spirit. They know what will offend me. They know I, I, like if someone said she did this and this, you just know, no, 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 no. That cannot be that person. You know, I remember one day somebody uh, spoke, a, a friend of mine told me that pastor had said something, he had apparently a spiritual son somewhere in Chumeb, and these people are bragging to say, it. I said, no, that's not a person. No, 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 you are lying. No, it's true. They even, so I said, no, because I know him. I know his spirit. I know what he really can say and what most of the time he wouldn't say. I know when you say something, I know that that cannot be him. Someone can say this, your husband did this. I just know that's not true. But sometimes they can say things and I know, yeah, I know he's able to say that. Because you know the spirit of a person. Amen. So this is, this is, this is, this is what I'm saying. It's not hard as people make it. God ever want to talk to you? Ever want to talk to you? The Bible says he will lead you and he will guide you. So it, he, he put it on himself. You never came to God and said, God, if you can just lead me. He put it in his word so we know that he desired to lead us and to guide us every day. It was never your idea. It's the same with salvation. It was never your idea. The Bible said, God, we were not seeking God. There was none, none righteous, none seeking God. No one was calling unto heaven. But God came. It was the idea of God. That's why salvation is only sustained by God, not by ourselves. We cooperate with him, but he sustains us. Amen? So here it says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, so again, I just want to tell you that expect the Spirit of God to speak to you through this fasting. He will tell you to change certain things in your life. Most of the time when God wants to do a great work on you, he will start on yourself by removing certain things that are wrong in your life, by showing you things how well. Then he will give you a word. If, maybe if you are down, he will encourage you and things like that. But for a greater work of God, he will begin to remove things out of your life. Amen? And then saying, now separate to me Barnabas and so for the work which I have called them consecration. Amen. He's saying, separate to me. And the Bible says, having fasted and prayed, laid hands on them and sent them away. So praying and fasting is important if you really want to hear the voice of God. It is when they were fasting, the Spirit spoke. For the meantime, they were together, thinking that they were part of one another. You get it? Worshipping there in the church of Antioch. And God has got a mission with Paul and Barnabas. And he sent them away. To hear clearly from God, it's important that you fast and pray. Because what they do, it, it, it puts down your flesh and all those voices that you've been hearing. And it narrowed. To one voice, which is the voice of God. So it's so easy to hear God when you're fasting and praying. He will rebuke you. And you will hear his rebuke. Oftentimes when you're not fasting, he will rebuke you and you won't hear it. The, vo the rebuke of the Lord will remain with you for the whole year. But you have no power whatsoever to hear. I mean, you won't even hear. You, you have a, just a vague hearing, but it, you have no power to obey that. But when you begin to fast and pray, that voice of God becomes so loud that you cannot ignore. Hallelujah. 
even when you don't know, I mean, God can guide you in a direction, but oftentimes you are not really sure. Is it really this direction I must take? When you begin to fast and pray, you will have it and you will have assurance that this is the direction and you have that confidence to say, I'm going to go this way. He empowers you to take the right steps because now your spirit is in charge. You know, one time I remember a long time ago I was here and uh, I didn't mean to preach those words because I, um, I don't like really to preach like that, those days when I was like, young. We were here, I think it, we were still there. And then there was a bigger woman, a very big woman, and I used to be afraid of her. And uh, so, because I just used to be afraid of her. There's just a fight, I don't know, like that. But one day, I think I was fasting that day, and uh, words just came out of me to rebuke her, and I didn't like it. And when I already spoke, it, it's already out. So God gave me the power to rebuke her. She's a big woman. But no matter who don't do that if I wasn't empowered by God. So, and when I realized that I have said it, it's already out. I couldn't put it in. And sometimes that's what happens. Sometimes when you are operating by yourself, but when you are under the spirit, the spirit at times can make you say things. I have experienced that many, many times that I'll say things that I've not planned to say. All of a sudden, it's already out. The moment I realize it's already out. And I remember that was the, the day that that lady humbled herself under the teachings here. Because she used to intimidate me. She used to look down on me. She make it so hard for me. And because um, I used to live with, she used to live close to me. So she would say that I must pick her up to come here. Oh dear. I, I just didn't want that. And I don't know how to, not to pick her up. It was so terrible and hard. And one day we were in the car. She asked, I know who, who is the leader in this thing. And I was behind because at that time I was having kids. Maybe I don't know which one. Maybe Shalom or maybe I had only these two. So Shalom, I believe that was a very, very small baby. So when she asked like that, I kind of like duck behind the car. I couldn't talk. Then my husband spoke. He said, it's her. <laughs> She used to ter terrify me because she looked at me like I'm young and like, you know, and even intimidate me and challenge me sometimes. They would, the people wouldn't know that she's challenging me. But, you know, because in the spirit, that time God, you see, like I would say that that time God would tell me things, but I didn't know it was him talking because I wasn't really grown. You get it. But now if she would have acted like that, I would immediately pick up that this one is here to, to fight me. Maybe she wasn't a witch, but there was a, a wrong spirit in her. She was looking at me like, oh, who is this guy, child here? And so, and so that that day when I spoke that word, it changed everything in her. And she, it, from there, I never experienced a difficult time with her anymore. That was, the, and there we will go for evangelism. She'll be part of it. You see, it was it, it, that, it, just that the Holy Ghost did like that. Makes her, and later God said, after the service, they didn't know why I did that. I just said, let's give one another a hug. So as we are giving one another, I was obeying God because God said I must give a hug. But I can't just all of a sudden run to her. <laughs> so I said, let's just give one another a hug. And from there, healing came. It was like that whole thing that was there, that demon that was standing there, challenging me and intimidating me every day was broken. You get it? Through what? Fasting. Hallelujah. And one day she called me, after some time, she called me, she asked me, who are you listening to? I said, no, mama, I'm not listening to anyone. No, I just want to help you get the teachings from the person. Maybe thinking that she, she, she has got access to information, she can help me. I said, no, no one. Is no one really inspiring you? I said, no one, mama. And all that things, they just get like this. The power of fasting and praying. If I, we were, maybe that day we wouldn't fasting, God would have not used that thing to break and I would have a problem to the point that I was even afraid to come to the Bible study and teach. The moment she said, come pick me up, I'm already frozen. 
That was a very thing. That was a very hard thing. That was a very hard challenge I had at that time. Very hard. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So he gives you what? Boldness. It's the same thing that when we were riding the, when I was getting driver's license. You know, that day I didn't eat. I was fasting. And so this guy would just write every mistake you make. He's just writing. He's just writing. He's just marking. I don't know what he's marking there. He's just marking. And, and I got so angry. I don't know what boldness came. I just rebuked him and said, hey, you cannot do that. You must be able to know that I can drive when you're in this car. You must be comfortable. And that's what you must look at. Of course, I'm going to make a mistake because you are here. So I'm nervous. But generally, you must be able to, 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 make a, to, to project that this person can really drive. And I, thought, and I already drive in Windhoek. I just want the paper. From that moment on, I, that guy, I didn't see him marking it all. At all anymore. Until we finish. Now, I want to tell you, what gave me that boldness? It was because my spirit was in charge. So fear could not intimidate me. The first day, I was frozen. You see? I, I remember the first day, you were fear everywhere, in the stomach, everything. And when he's marking, you are even more afraid. Because it's keep just marking. Even he even accused me and said that apparently I'm always looking in the mirror. I rebuked him. I said, no, you're accusing me. Even the other day you accused me. I don't do that. I'm a driver. With that boldness, speaking to an instructor. But how many times have I failed and I was just beaten down and frozen to fear? It, it, fasting can remove those things that are in your soul there that wants to block you. No one can intimidate you when you're filled with the power of God. No one. That's why I tell you, that's why a witch can come or someone sent of the devil can come. But when I look at them, I just see nothing. Like a, I just see them as grasshoppers. What, but in under circumstances, you know, let me give an example, a live example. When we were in the north now, there was a woman that spoke. Oftentimes when I do deliverance, I don't feel, I don't have emotions like to feel, you know. This woman said, Muneok, Mokan. But Bo, I could feel that that was true. Because I, I started almost fear entering me. But that fear was to make me, to let me know that it's true. And I could kind of like feel that it, it was a big snake there. And so, but, but you know when, you are, when we do those crusades, you are always fasting, right? I just didn't care. I just knew the authority in Christ. And I rebuked it immediately. That fear did not touch me. I could feel that fear almost coming to me, trying to frozen me. Because that's a real thing. That's like a real spirit, the real demon. Maybe it's a, it's a... But under the power of God, it's like under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you are not afraid of anything. No, you are not afraid of them. And that's why even under the anointing of the Spirit, the words you speak, you understand? The dop, Hallelujah. What is the dop? It's a dop. What is the hammer? I know that I make a flu. It was a poppy. Under that power, nothing is going to happen. It's the anointing. It's the enablement of God. And one of the way we enhance ourselves in this enablement of God is through prayer and fasting, because the flesh is down, the spirit is up. The real you is up. And the Bible says, whatever you do in faith, like whatever you speak in faith, it shall come to pass. And normally when you fast, your faith is always up. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said this kind cannot come out except by prayer and fasting. So why did Jesus say, because these are stronghold. And you know, when I want to tell you that stronghold, listen, stronghold, I can't A sickness, let me give an example. It comes like COVID. It was a sickness, as you know, COVID, but it came with a spirit of fear and death. So anyone that was having that sickness, they were tormented by fear and death and fear of death. So people generally, they are speaking just um, COVID, but there was a, a fear of death, terror at night. And now this kind cannot come out because that there are strongholds uh, just on COVID itself. There are other things that need to be broken. Fear of death need to be broken. Terror need to be broken. You get what I'm saying? 
and all those symptoms, they need to be broken. And your mind, the oppression that it comes with, the heaviness, and all those things need to be broken. Now, when you are praying and fasting, that faith is already there to break it. That's why I said this kind cannot come out but by prayer and fasting. There are things in your own personal life, they cannot come out but by prayer and fasting. They are dimension in the spirit you will never touch, but except by prayer and by fasting. Hallelujah. There are demons that you will not be able to challenge. Stronghold. Let's say anger. That you cannot break out except by prayer and by fasting. Sometimes just the spirit of fear, the way it has been ruled, you came to pull out by just saying, Jesus, take this thing out of me. Take this thing out of me. Please, please, Lord, I love you. No. It needs another dimension of prayer, a prayer of power and faith who uproot every cause of it out of you. And prayer and fasting is just that. It's one of the highest, if not the highest form of prayer that we have received from the Lord. It's actually a privilege to fast because it deals with spiritual matters. It uproots, it destroys. You get in power to uproot, you get in power to destroy, you get in power to bring order even in the pattern of your thoughts. It's only if you are not fasting and praying. You know, many people like today, people, most of people can fast, but they won't pray. There will be no power. Power comes as you are praying. It's two. You must couple it together. The reading of the scripture. So at this time, be more in the Bible than in the world of internet. We are living in the world of internet. Be more in your word so that God can speak to you as they minister to the Lord. Right? The Lord spoke. Amen. So they were not busy chilling. They were busy what? Ministering. And the Lord spoke. And the Holy Spirit spoke and said, separate unto me. There is a word coming to you as you minister to God. As you take time to minister to him. The word of God will come to you. I promise you. I promise you. You will hear God. Amen. Praise the Lord.